Family Friendlies, I'm Carolyn and welcome to my life. For those of you who might be new here or a little confused about what my channel is about, about, about two, maybe sometimes three times a week, I invite you into my life. Yeah, I invite you into my life. I live in an RV, I travel the country, I share my experiences, I share tips, I share views, I share scenery, I share travel, I share my thoughts, my philosophies on life. And so that brings me to something I feel like I need to clarify on a Sunday night video. I say this all the time on Tuesday videos, but it still seems to be leaving some people angry and confused. Tuesdays are my As I See It series. Tuesdays, I talk politics, I talk history, I bring in my passion for the things that I studied to the public and try to explain current events through a historical lens. Those videos are only on Tuesday. Thursday videos and Sunday videos are not changing. Thursday and Sunday videos will continue to be what they've always been. Sometimes you will still hear politics on these, just like you have for the last four years, but the Tuesdays are devoted just to political conversation. So, again, if you don't want to hear politics, but you still want to watch everything else, tune in on Thursdays and Sundays and skip Tuesdays. Now let's get started where I left you off last week. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got your mind on. Uh, yeah, yuck. I left you last week with a leak in uh, my one of my brakes on my rear duels. And I'm going to tell you today what happened. I'm going to tell you what my experience was trying to get it fixed because I think this is going to be helpful to a lot of you. I'm also just going to share a few things that I learned not only from the people who fixed it, but from some of you after last week's video. So we'll go through the story of that. And then uh, today's going to be a double feature after the break video. Stay tuned at the end. I'm going to have a link just for the people who watch all the way to the end, there will be a link to tonight's travel video, which are going to be some really cool towns in Colorado. So make sure you stay tuned to the end. I'm just going to give you the story of the breaks and share with you what I learned so that those of you who are on the road or hoping to get on the road uh, can maybe uh, keep this in your binder for, for things to know. <laughs> I learn as I go and I share what I learn as I go with you. Okay, so one day I was out playing with Sadie and her ball rolled underneath the rig to a point that she wouldn't go get it. And I actually had to crawl under the rig to get it. And while I was crawling underneath the rig, I happened to notice that leak from my rear brake, that something was leaking out of it. I felt around, I knew immediately that it was brake fluid. And I started panicking. I looked it up on Google and of course I saw a master cylinder, brake cylinder, and I was in Leadville, Colorado. The only way out of Leadville, Colorado is downhill, a lot of downhill. Leadville is at like 10,000 feet and everything was like two, 3,000 feet downhill. So I was a little nervous, uh, like thinking I can't drive it and here I am out in the National Forest, what am I gonna do? I called every tire shop, every repair shop in Leadville, no one would work in my RV. Interestingly enough, through my travels recently in Colorado and in Wyoming, I had uh, stay tuned for that. I had an issue in Wyoming <laughs> when it rains it pours. Stay tuned, subscribe to hear about that. It was uh, transmission. So uh, stay tuned for that. But yeah, I've been having a really, in the states that you wouldn't expect me to be having a problem finding people to work on my rig. Oh, and also in Colorado, I was just trying to get a tire checked. Went to three different tire shops. Nobody would work on my RV. So that. I don't know what's going on with that. That's been really frustrating lately. For anybody who's thinking about living in an RV, uh, it's not always easy to find somebody to work on it. Don't know what's going on. They don't like the size. They can't put it up on the lift. It takes up too much space in their garage. These are the excuses that I heard. And then the big rig places, like the big truck places, I called a couple of those and they only work on diesel. They wouldn't work. So anyway, buyer beware <laughs> if you're buying an RV and uh, so literally I called every every repair shop in Leadville nobody would work on it I made sure my uh, roadside assistance was up to date but I called a tow truck there was a place that would work on it tw near Twin Lakes which was I think 30 or 40 miles away downhill so I called the tow truck and said asked if they would do it and of course they would i was curious about what they would charge out of pocket it was like 500 dollars out of pocket for the tow truck to take me 30 miles and but 
he he's the one who actually recommended the shop 30 miles away so uh i was about ready to do that of course i don't like just sitting here knowing i have a problem like i want to get it taken care of i want to know how it's going to be solved i'm not going to just sit here and say okay well i'll deal with it later it's like even though i didn't have to move i had to deal with it now although in a few days i was picking up my friend christy she was coming to see me from the Denver airport. So, and stay tuned, I have our, our fun adventures, that's what's at the end of this video. Luckily, luckily, thank goodness, one of my good friends was camped in the area and one of her friends just got there and had been camping uh, on another part of, in another part of Leadville. So I told her what was going on. She's like, you know what, my friend so-and-so is here. Maybe they'll come over and take a look at it. Two guys. And so they, uh, they did. I didn't, I'd met one of them before and I think they both knew me from my videos, but they were so sweet. They came over one day and they were like, well, we don't know that we can do anything, but we'll take a look. So they got under the rig and I thought it was a master cylinder. And one of them was like, I'll call him R. He looked under the hood and he's like, no, this is your master cylinder. It's not back here. I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, this is why fathers, if you're watching me, teach your girls. Don't just take your sons out into the garage to work on your car. Teach your girls too. You know, it's a shame that we don't grow up learning how to use tools. We don't grow up learning how to fix cars. That That's traditionally been a boy's thing. I know some women, that that's not true for you. But I think predominantly, I think we can all agree that while the boys went out in the garage to work with dad, the girls were relegated to the kitchen with mom. And that's a shame uh, that maybe those roles should be switched once in a while, right? And that the boys should be in the kitchen sometimes and the girls should be in the garage. So, uh, you know, and it, so they looked at it. They, uh, they said, no, it's not the master cylinder. And they said, I think it's a caliper. I think it's just your caliper. So luckily there was an auto parts store in town. So I called them, I ordered the caliper. They suggested I also order new brake pads just in case the brake pads were soaked with fluid, even though the brakes were, all, I just got the brakes done last year. But they said, you know, just in case it'd be better to have the brakes. So I ordered caliper, a caliper and, a, and the brake pads. And uh, they also said, so here's a tip. Here's what I wanted to share with you. The, a couple things, like my brake light wasn't on. There, there was no warning light that this was happening. The, the leak wasn't that bad. My brake fluid was just barely, barely low. So what they told me is I could have driven it the 30 miles to the repair shop and even downhill just kept an eye on my brake fluid if i had to you know stop every few miles to make sure my brake fluid wasn't leaking out because that's the real danger because your brakes will heat up and they'll stop working so that's the real danger but uh in a situation like that uh, one of you, a mechanic, thank you so much, said what I could have done is also clamped off the hose to that brake. Um, although it seems to me that would have caused a lot of damage to the brake with no fluid going to it at all, that that might have just completely ruined everything. I guess, I guess that would be a temporary fix to drive 30 miles to a repair shop. You wouldn't want to drive it around like that. But with all the downhill that I had to do, I don't know that that would have been an option for me, to be honest with you. I don't think 3,000, it was 3,000 feet downhill to this repair shop. I think, I think clamping off the hose so no fluid was coming, going to that break. I don't know that I would have wanted to do that. But you mechanics, comment below so that other people can learn. What do you think? Would that have been okay? And I also learned that you're, a, a rig like this, you're really mostly relying on your front brakes anyway, that you're going to be replacing your front brakes more than you're going to be replacing your rear brakes because you're, when, you, when you're putting on your brakes, it's the, it's the front brakes that are doing most of the work. So again, they said I would have been fine driving to a repair shop. And they just said, you know, go buy a bunch of brake fluid, a whole bunch, just in case you need to keep refilling it while you're going to the repair shop. But like I said, because the brake light wasn't on, because I had only lost like this much, it was a slow leak, it wasn't a huge deal, it would have been drivable to get it somewhere. And uh, the other thing, the other thing is I thought I had brake fluid on hand and I didn't. Make sure you always carry transmission fluid, oil, brake fluid, power steering fluid, just in case you ever get a leak. Make sure you carry those things and if you use it, make sure you go out right away and refill your stock. It's really important to have fluids on hand in case you ever get a leak. So they fixed the caliper. I went into town the next day to pick up the parts. It took a day to get there. Went the next day to pick up the parts while I was driving around town. My And oh, that's another thing, my brake pedal wasn't soft. And I told them that. I'm like, this is really weird because I drove all over the place. I came back from Denver or where, where I was running errands my brake pedal wasn't soft 
And in case you don't know, a soft brake pedal means it goes closer to the floor than normal, soft or spongy. Uh, usually, you know, you should, you should get in, go in your RV or your rig now. Hopefully, you know, everything is healthy. Make note of where your brake pedal rests when you put your foot on it. And it, if, ever, it, if ever starts getting spongy or soft and getting closer to the floor, you might have a problem. So just, just know, it's really important to know your rig. Be aware of these things as you're driving. Make note, mental note of these things so that if anything changes, you're aware of it. And that's another thing. My brake pedal wasn't soft. So, yeah. Uh, so... Those were all good signs. Those were all good signs that it wasn't major. And if I had known anything about this, then I would have known that I didn't need to panic like I did for a day or two and that I could have driven myself to the uh, auto repair shop 30 miles away. So they fixed the caliper. I don't even think it cost me. The parts weren't even a hundred dollars. I don't know. I bought like $300 worth of parts just in case. And then I took a bunch back because we didn't need them. I ended up, there she is. <laughs> hi. I was, why don't you say hi? She's just out running around. She's doing so good. Uh, I didn't, uh, I ordered two calipers by mistake. I ordered the brake pads that I didn't need. So I, I think it ended up costing me just a little over $100 in parts. And wonderful, lovely guys. They didn't charge me a dime. I tried to pay them and they didn't charge me a dime. So it cost me like 100 bucks in parts. So yeah. So that's a story of my brakes. I'm trying to think. I think I shared with you all the tips about that. Just be aware of your rig. Make mental note of everything. How, how your steering feels. How your brake pedal feels. Check your fluids on a regular basis. I do. I had, I had just checked my fluids not too long ago and I knew that everything was full. So when I looked under the hood and saw that it was only down like this much, I knew it probably hadn't been leaking very long. It yeah, there were a lot of things that now, you know, another lesson learned as I, as I live this life and drive an RV, another lesson learned about how things work. So, yeah, they got me going. They fixed it in a couple hours, and I got going, and I, that was the story about my brakes. So stay tuned for tonight's travel video right here. Look, right here, there will be a link. I'm going to put a, a thumbnail. Click here for the travel video. It will not be, at least right now, no, you know what? I don't think I'm going to put it out publicly. You have to click here if you want to see the travel video. A mystery video. How's that? <laughs> All right. I'll see you there.